Building an app without a design system is kind of like trying to cook a five-star meal by just throwing random ingredients together and hoping something pops out the other side. Unfortunately, hoping for the best is not a great way to live life or build cool stuff that people actually want. Luckily, this three-step Claude Coat system that I'm about to show you helps turn that frown upside down by building fresh UIs every single time. This process has three phases. I'm going to demo each phase and show how it builds onto the next piece. And so we'll finish it all off by actually using the system to build a real design. This video is going to be great for you if number one, you're already getting pretty good with the coding element of vibe coding, but the UIs that you make are still kind of lame. And number two, if you're new to the world of vibe coding and you want to have systems to set you off in the right direction. Because one unavoidable fact is this. Professional designs will be a make or break point for the success of what you're building. So don't brush it to the side. And by the way, all of the stuff that I'm about to go through in the video is available for free in the description below the video, as well as countless other detailed guides and tutorials. So let's get into it. Now, most vibe coders are pretty bad at design, which makes sense because it is a entire skill set unto its own. But it's still critical that we get it right because professional designs are what make users stick. So the first step of our process is mining inspiration for our overall aesthetic. And I like to use a tool called Mobbin. Now, Mobbin is a company that basically compiles every screen imaginable from some of the most professionally designed apps that we all know and love. Now, if you were to ask most designers, how do you actually get good at design? What they'll tell you is look at other good design, right? Look at the world around you, look at other apps that you like and try to draw inspiration from those things, try to build them, try to replicate them. So that is exactly what we are doing. Now for this app we're building, I'm gonna use Nano Banana to generate interior designs for homeowners and renters. Now this idea for the app, it's kind of in the beginning stages, but I wanna get inspired about the type of features and things that I might wanna see in this and what it might feel like for the user. So I wouldn't want to just copy another interior design app. I'd want to maybe hop into a different vertical and find inspiration and then bring that inspiration over into my app. So I came across two apps that I, I really just like the overall feeling of, right, for this specific app that I am looking to build. The first one is Airbnb. The reason I like it, I think it feels very warm. It feels welcoming. And in general, I think it has a very clear feeling aesthetic, despite the fact that it's delivering a lot of information to people. I also like this app that I found called Blackbird, which is for earning rewards at like high tier restaurants and things like that. Now, the reason I like this is similarly, it is very simple. There's not a ton of stuff going on. The navigation, for example, is very simple, very uncluttered. And that's ultimately what I'm going for with this app. I want it to feel very warm, very welcoming, but also very clear, professional, and to the point. I'm trying to merge those two worlds together. So that's why I chose these two apps. And so what you want to do is go through and download out maybe 10 screens that you think represent the core aesthetic or the piece of that app that you want to take forward. So I'm going to go download a few of these screens and then we'll move on to the next stage. So this systematic approach that we're taking to mining that inspiration first is what's going to help separate amateur level designs from professional looking designs, which we're going to see at the very end when we go to actually build this thing. Because instead of randomly copying designs or building super generic interfaces, we're going to be borrowing patterns and ways of working and ways of doing things from apps that are already very successful. So now that we have this like visual direction locked in, we need to have the language model explore the psychology behind why it works the way it works. Now, a lot of people that try this method of like using idea mining or inspiration tools, they kind of stop there. They take the image that they downloaded and then they just send it into the language model and start trying to design based on that image. But the problem is that there's not really a meta level understanding of the UX and the UI of those images and what they really mean. Because a great user experience 
makes the user feel a certain way about your app and what they're doing. And so we want to be able to prompt that how to do this, right? This how to use this into our application. Okay, so here we are inside of a basic Next.js project where we're gonna actually design this thing. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this group of screens that we downloaded out of Mobbin and we're gonna tell the system what we actually liked about it because we want it to extract design principles out of each of these images. So the way that we're gonna do that is with a custom command inside of Claude code. So we're gonna type slash extract it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the system what we actually liked about each group of images. So after we tell it what we like, we're gonna hit enter. And that is gonna basically call this prompt that we have called the extract it prompt. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna go through, it's gonna read all of these images, it's gonna understand what's in there, and it's going to turn each of them into a style guide. So it's gonna break down the actual color palette, the typography, the different text styles, the component styling. It's gonna build a design system from these two groups, and then it's gonna place its analysis inside of this competitor analysis markdown file. Now, the thing that makes this system really unique is that we're having the language model act as if it was a UX designer, but it's breaking down a chain of thought and wrapping it in these pondering tags. So we're saying, hey, you are this very like heady artistic type and you really like to think about the app, its aesthetics, the principles it conforms to, how it makes a user feel a specific way. And then we're going to have it wrap its thought process, right? So it's going to look at all of those image and have a meta discussion about why those images work the way they work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all of that stuff and we're going to merge it with our app idea. So once this system completes, we now have this full design system outlined for each of those two companies, right? Both of those apps. So we have the full color palette, the typography that they're using, their component styling, and like a really basic understanding of the design philosophy. But this really, to me, is not enough yet. Like I need concrete guidance on how to actually implement this thing. And that's why the next command that we are going to run is our expand it prompt. And so what this is going to do is it's going to go a level deeper. It's going to take that competitor analysis that we just made, and it's gonna really think through how do we actually leverage this thing in order to pull off that feeling that we want to have? And let's dive deeper on what the philosophy of this design system actually is. And then once you are done with that, I want you to put it all, the how-to, the philosophy of it, the raw style guide, I want you to put all of that into a styles.markdown file. And so this meta understanding layer that we're running through is what helps transform you from someone that just copies designs to someone that understands the underlying user psychology and can prompt that into the language model. So when you can really articulate why a different app worked the way it did to make a user feel a certain way, well, then you can recreate those feelings at will by prompting the system to do it. But that understanding is not enough. We need to be able to take this thing now and turn it into something that we can implement UI with. So let's get into that piece next. So the only problem now is that this needs to be codified into something that works for us, right? Like we need to take this echo output of what our competitors do, and we need to construct it into a repeatable system that works for us. Because what you don't want to do is just take this and say, hey, here's what makes some other apps work. Make it work for my app now and just let the system run wild. We need to turn this into our own token-based design system. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run this final command that we have called merge it. And so what this is going to do is it is going to take the style system that we just got from both of those other apps, and it's going to fuse our app idea into it. So we're going to say, hey, we're trying to build an app that does X, Y, Z. I need you to build me a style guide and a system of philosophy and an implementation guide just like we got in detail for these other two apps, but for my specific idea based on what I am building and who I'm building it for. All right, so after that stage is finished running, 
We've now merged together everything into one comprehensive style guide that we are going to use. So the last thing that we need to do is build with this and get an actual result from it. And so down here, we're gonna run this lash command, design it. And what we pass in is an example of the screen that we want generated. Now, when I'm doing design specific exercises, I love to generate multiple looks of a specific screen. Meaning in this case, if I'm gonna be building a screen that might show to a user when they've run out of credits, I wanna see like what three different variations of that might actually look like and get the AI actually brainstorming how we might present that to the user based on the app that we have. And so this is great to really brainstorm the different states that a screen could be in, right? What if it has no data? What if it has tons of data? What if it is erroring out? What if it needs the user to take a specific action, right? There are like a lot of different states that a screen could exist in. And then there are a lot of different screens that you might wanna have in your app. So we're gonna let this thing run and then we're gonna look at what the final output looks like. And again, if you want any of these prompts, the design it, the expand it, the extract it, the merge it, any of this stuff, all going to be for free in the school group below the video so that you can actually look at this thing and read it and see how it works. Okay, so we just ran this for three different screens that we wanted to get like some brainstorming on. The first one was like an empty state of the home screen of this app. And so we have three different inspirations that we could consider maybe dialing in. The first one has a really nice like minimalist getting started screen where we can click here to upload a photograph or we could look at other spaces that people have done and kind of get inspiration for it, right? So very clean, breathable, kind of like subtle. Then in the middle, we have this like carousel version where again, we have this option to upload our own photo to kick off this process. But then we have also these before and afters that we can look at, which is pretty cool. Now there's obviously some issues with the transparency on some of these, but I do kind of like this concept too of this slider where you can see work maybe that other people have done, right? So it's actually a good place to put social proof into the app and show like before after transformations. So that's kind of cool. And then we have this like story driven one, which um, I don't really like this one that much. So one of these two, I think is pretty nice. Then we get down to what happens when it's processing images. So I like all of these, to be honest. I think this is actually the one of the screens that I was most impressed with where it's showing like if I was a user, right? And I clicked, you know, get started transforming my space and it's processing like what I want and saying what I want this thing to look like. These are some different screens, right? So it could have this little gradient kind of processing in the background. And again, this is like a little janky. It's not optimized. This would be for a mobile phone, by the way. And so it's not really super optimized, but we can see like kind of what that would look like where it's like this loading AI state and it's maybe parsing out information and streaming tokens back, telling us like, hey, cozy natural, bold statement, modern minimal, right? So that's pretty cool. This one, I also like where it's like doing this actual analysis and it makes it look really clear, like it's analyzing it. And then I, I do also like this one where it's like, hey, we're discovering your style, right? It's timeless, it's contemporary, it's eclectic. So I think number one and three, I really like both of those. And then what happens when the AI limit gets reached? What are some different options that we have there? This dark one, I think is way not, not really what we need for this app. So version one, warm and encouraging. Um, I kind of like that. Like you've already done enough transformation today. Do you want to just wait till tomorrow or do you want to unlock the unlimited plan? So like nice little like paywall. And then we have this, uh, this middle one here as well. So this complete process where we go through from mining the inspiration, gaining a meta understanding of what makes those apps work, and then applying that understanding to our own app that process is what will help you compete with other companies that actually have professional design resources. So by thinking through the multiple states and the edge cases in different screens, you're building with the same level of polish that you would expect to see in an actual professional company, again, with design resources. And so this is the type of stuff that's gonna help you have significantly higher purchase rates, conversion rates, and stick rates and retention rates for your customers because the app feels smooth, it works, and it looks professional. So remember guys, three steps to build this thing out every time. And even if you don't have Claude code and you maybe use a tool like Cursor or some other IDE, you can take those Claude code slash command definitions that I have and just use them as regular prompts. So my challenge to you, 
Use this in an app that you have been working on where you're not super thrilled with how professional or polished your UIs feel. And if this process actually clicked for you, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I love doing practical in-depth tutorials like this. And if there's anything that you do differently that you think gets better results or different results, let me know in the comments below because I love to evolve my processes over time. So that's it. Go build something people want to use. Peace out.